What's up guys? Thanks for stopping by Life on the Hill. Today I'm really excited because I just bought this no-till drill that you see behind me and I'm really excited to put it to use. Okay, that's a lie. I didn't buy the no-till drill because they're really expensive, but I did rent it to see if it is something that I would in fact need to or want to purchase. Rented this from the local co-op here in uh, Northeast Tennessee and I have got it set for uh, the blend of seed that is in uh, this green cover seed fall release blend. Uh, if you ever watch anything on YouTube with food plots, you've probably seen uh, Grant's channel Growing Deer. Anyway, this is part of the blend that they created with the help of green cover seed. Uh, so it's got radish, turnip, rapeseed, cereal rye, oats, oats, uh, some winter wheat, uh, a couple different pea blends, a couple co uh, clover blends, some alfalfa, and some buckwheat. Kind of hard to read on this particular label because of the, the ink is going away but anyway you see what i've got going on here so i want to show you real quick when you're planting a blend uh you've got to figure out which what your seed fall rate is with uh with any no-till drill and most of these are recommended with uh, monoculture say you're planting all rye planting all wheat uh, buckwheat whatever you're planting uh, the measurements and the suggested uh increments are implied that you're planting a singular uh, a singular seed type. You kind of got to split the difference between the recommendations from the manufacturer as far as uh, pounds per acre as far as how, when you go to seed it. Uh, and then also kind of keep in mind what your seeds are. So if you kind of look at your seed blend like we just did, you can kind of figure out, okay, well, buckwheat seed's kind of big. Uh, some of the some of the wheat, some of the rye can be kind of big, but obviously your uh, your rapes, your turnips, your radishes, those are really tiny seeds. So again, got to split the difference. And so with this particular blend, green cover seed recommends 70 pounds per acre. Now these are 50 pound bags. And so you kind of look here at your seed gauge, you got some wheat, oats, rye, buckwheat. Uh, and so you kind of go, well, somewhere between 74 pounds per acre on buckwheat means you should have your uh, pointer setting on an eight, but you don't have all buckwheat. So you kind of got to split the difference. So I'm going to seed this at somewhere between uh, 38 and 49, because that's probably my biggest seed. And then we've got some wheat. So 50 pounds per acre here. I've got the pointer setting set to a six and a half. You can see here, six and a half. Okay. So we're going to make a couple passes and we'll figure out exactly uh, if that's going at a good rate, going too fast, going too slow. Personally, with it being my first time, A, using a no-till drill, B, using this particular one, I would rather it uh, seed and fall a little slower than perhaps recommended because I'll just make multiple passes if I seed everything that I've got and then I've still got seed left. Obviously not gonna let the seed go to waste, so I'll just make multiple passes. I'm not a farmer, I food plot, so my thing is all about wildlife and uh, quality food, quality habitat. So anyway, this year we've had a lot of rain here in East Tennessee and I had a pretty good spring plot, but weeds became a problem. So it's pretty weedy. Uh, and again, due to the rain, I've not had a whole lot of time as far as breaks in rain to spray. And I'm also kind of trying to avoid spray for multiple reasons. A, there's new studies showing that glyphosate's not safe to use like we all thought it was. B, uh, it's really expensive this year. So I normally would would spray and kill and terminate my spring planting so that I can prepare a bed for my fall seed. But this year, I'm just gonna drill directly into what's standing there. With this method too, you're never cleaning the table. You've never got dead. Uh, you've always got something that they could eat should they choose to. Um, so really excited to try this out. I've always wanted a no-till drill, uh, but again, they are just, they're so pricey. So hopefully this pans out and if it pans out, then it may just force my hand and cause me to uh, either buy a used one or potentially just bite the bullet and, and get a brand new one. So with this video, I kind of want to do a couple of things. One. I want to compare what I traditionally do, which is just broadcasting. You buy an earthway spreader, you broadcast the seed, pretty cheap, just a little bit of legwork and uh, sweat equity. 
versus a drill method where you actually have a no-till drill. And I also am really excited to try out this particular seed blend. Last year, I used a product called Deadly Dozen from Real World Wildlife Products, I believe, RWWP. I top dressed it with some rye seed as well from the local co-op, so it was really cheap, um, but I had good success with it. This seed was a little more expensive, but I was really intrigued by the particular blend and the fact that it has something that feeds early, uh, feeds in the middle, and then also it feeds uh, later on in the winter when there's very little uh, fuel and food sources for them available. I would prefer uh, something like three-point hitch, but a local co-op only has these pull-behind methods. I mean, if you imagine something that's connected to your tractor, then obviously you can be a lot more nimble. You don't have all this excess here and uh, just a, a much, much, much smaller footprint. But anyway, should be a good test for the actual drilling method. Okay, so I'm finished with the drill. I uh, got all my seed planted. Uh, things I learned is the pull behind is certainly a bit of a nuisance as far as uh, making any sort of tight turns or anything like that. If you've ever pulled a trailer, you realize that a tag along versus a fifth wheel is night and day difference as far as turning radius and, and just overall maneuverability. It's kind of the same thing with a, uh, a tag along versus something that uh, connects via three point hitch or whatever. I would definitely prefer the three point hitch mechanism versus a tag along. That's one. Two, I don't think it was the drill's fault. I think it was probably my inexperience's fault, but I knew I'd bought extra seed as far as uh, pounds per acre and how many acres I was planting. So I knew I was gonna have extra, which is good. I'd rather have extra as opposed to not enough. But I had already went around uh, all of the pieces of property that I was gonna plant this year. And I opened the bag of seed, or the, uh, I opened the grain bin and I had uh, quite a bit of excess. So that tells me one of two things, either A, I way over ordered, which probably isn't the case, or B, this is probably the most likely because I'm inexperienced with it. I didn't have the fall rate, uh, the, the gate open far enough. So what I ended up doing was, especially after I'd already went around everything once, uh, I opened the gate up a little more. I think I ended up close to about 10. Uh, yeah, so 10 was, I actually opened it up twice. I went from, started with six and a half like you saw, and then I opened it up to eight, and I think eight was probably the sweet spot as far as seeding rate is concerned. I had already went through everything and a couple of the places twice that I wanted, so I still had some extra seed, so I opened it up to 10 and just went over some other places. For me personally, without getting either really good with it or B, maybe trying the three-point hitch method, I honestly think that I personally would be suited better for say like a crimper so that you can just terminate the crop and I just enjoy broadcasting. My ground's a little hilly. Actually all of my ground is, is a bit of a hill and so it's a bit of a nuisance uh, trying to carry around something heavy like that. Uh, plus two, I just have a two-wheel drive tractor so if it's the least bit wet and you got a load going up the hill, it'll spin out. So me personally, I personally could have seeded it faster had I just broadcasted it. Uh, I only plant somewhere between two and a half, three acres. So I'm not somebody who has, you know, 300 acres and 50 acre food plots or anything like that. So if you're, if you're somebody who has a massive food plot, yeah, sure. Definitely go the, uh, the no-till uh, cedar method. But I, I just personally, I walk pretty fast. And so broadcasting works for me really well. So I think probably what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna get a crimper or look at getting a crimper. I know they're pretty pricey too. And then probably just continue to broadcast. Now the, there's obviously cons to that. Uh, if you broadcast, then that just means that the seed is there on top of the soil. So if you don't get a really good rain really soon, then you run the risk of, of either A, seeds not germinating, or B, uh, turkey, dove, whatever, all kinds of birds just coming through and, and picking your seed off. So at that point, you didn't do any good. The good thing about a no-till or the, the seed or the drill is obviously it's planted at a depth at which you set. And so obviously it's covered. 
and then the uh, the blunt wheel at the back packs it down and, and, and causes a good cover. So, so it's definitely a safer method as far as uh, putting your best foot forward and giving your seed the best chance to uh, to germinate. All right, so I was editing this video and I realized that this idiot's blabbing on about how he's gonna show you some updated footage of the progress and germination and whether or not I had any success or not. Realized that I never actually did that. Um, however, I've had a lot of time to think and reflect and just generally see how the, the food plot grew, how germination took place, and uh, all of those things that come with planting seed and waiting to see what happens. Um, and I will say this, I have never had this great of seed germination rate. And so that is that definitely speaks to the pros of a no-till drill. You know, obviously it's gonna ensure really good soil to seed contact because it's in the, in the soil. Uh, and because it's in the soil, it protects it from any sort of wildlife, uh, turkeys, birds, whatever, coming through, picking up and, and eating the seed before it ever has a chance to germinate. Another pro would certainly be visually, it is blatantly obvious where you have been as far as like where you've seeded, right? And you can see the, the definite rows um, as far as where you've been. And so that's just helpful for, um, A, you don't miss spots because you can see whether or not you've been there. Uh, B, you don't overseed or uh, potentially throw too much seed in one spot. And if you're tight on seed, you know, that may result in you being short uh, in seed and maybe not getting your full plot planted or maybe not having enough seed for that second plot or whatever. On the con side of things, especially with the method that I had and it being the pull behind method, I would definitely say that it was really cumbersome and difficult to navigate and maneuver. Uh, and if you're like me, you maybe have smaller plots or regular shapes, then I believe a pull behind method where you can't just continually pull forward, uh, it, it's just not really that worth it in my opinion. Now if you had something that was either uh, really square or uh, something that didn't have irregular shapes and edges, then yeah, <clears throat> you could just keep pulling around and everything's fine and it would be a great method. They are pretty pricey though, uh, and even even the one I rented, <clears throat> I, I certainly wouldn't say it's cheap to rent. Uh, definitely more expensive than just broadcasting. For me right now, having used it, even with the great germination that I had, personally, for me, I'm just gonna continue broadcasting, but I'm also gonna be on the lookout for a three-point hitch crimper that I can pull behind the tractor for termination purposes. That way I won't have to use, you know, glyphosate or whatever to terminate. So that's going to be my immediate goal is to continue broadcasting and be on the lookout for a crimper. Uh, with the ultimate goal of, yeah, I would like to try slash own three-point hitch no-till drill. But anyway, hopefully this was helpful. Maybe you were like me and you've been curious as to whether or not it would be beneficial to try a no-till drill. For me, like I said, I I just don't think that the pull-behind method is, is really worth it for plot sizes and shapes like mine. But, you know, try it for yourself. Go down to the local co-op, see if they've got rentals for you. Give it a go, and I mean, at that point, you can make your own educated decision. But hopefully this helps shed some light on some of the difficulties that I personally had with it. But anyway, thanks for stopping by. We'll catch you in the next one.